Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. I'm glad that each one of you can be here today. I think Aubrey has some news for us. She has a brand new little sister that's only a few days old. Let's begin Sunday School with prayer. Thank you, God, for your goodness, your love. Thank you, Lord, that you care for each one of us. You know when we're concerned or have needs or have a problem, Lord, and we can bring them to you, and you will take care of those problems for us, Father. Pray that you would be with each one of us. Help us to learn about you and, and to read your word and understand it and live by it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Gritty Journal of Adventuring. Kiwi Holmes is on the case. Kaya! Kiwi came somersaulting into the room. What are those thieves? Let me at them! Whoa! Settle down, Tiger. We didn't know if thieves had stolen the secret jar of olive oil. We just knew it was missing. Why would it be missing? Kiwi asked as he started looking through an old storage trunk. Then he stood up and catapulted out of the room. Kiwi loves to suddenly catapult out of rooms. The olive oil is priceless, but who would sneak into our treehouse and take it? Then I heard a throat clearing sound. I turned to see Kiwi wearing a big floppy hat, Sherlock Holmes style. He was holding a magnifying glass and carrying a notepad. I'm ready to solve this case. <laughs> well, Kiwi Holmes, I'm glad you're here. I've been waiting for the right time to wear this hat. I won it at the fair, remember? It should go on the relic wall. I wasn't sure his hat was worthy of relic wall status, but I kept that to myself for now. We have bigger worries at the moment. Nikki, I found some tracks over here. Looking through Kiwi's magnifying glass, you can see tiny footprints leading from the empty spot on the shelf to a hole in the wall. A hole I never noticed before. It was about the size of, well, Kiwi. Before I could stop him, Kiwi crawled inside. I got down on the floor and tried to see Kiwi through the hole. Too dark! I can't see anything! I reached into my knocky sock belt and handed him a glow bright stick. A greenish light poured out of the hole. Much better! Here we go! Ah!
Toss for Christy and come here. Oh. Nicole. I so you all know Nicole from Wednesday and she is going to be staying with uh, Mr. Richard and myself for the upcoming uh, two months. Two months, yeah. So um, anyway, she's going to be probably around as I videotape this, but um, we're excited to have her with us. So I'm going to let her go back to eating and I'll get started in our lesson. So I have a box here and in my box is some incredible things that I want to show you. Um, but before I get started, again, you guys do an amazing job because once again, they t tell me that there are three words in here. And these are key words for our lesson, but I can't find them. I don't know how you guys do it, but I can't find them. So I would love if one of you were to print this page out, do it, circle where these key words are, and send me a picture because I can't find it. And guess what? I don't have a cheat sheet. They don't give a teacher a cheat sheet. What's that all about? Anyway, so I want to go over our three key words that are in that picture. Okay, the first word is worry. And worry is when we allow one's mind to dwell on difficulty or trouble. So when we worry, we're focusing on difficulty and trouble. The next word is opposite of that. It's trust. And trust is a firm belief in reality, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Like, I can trust in God. He is my strength, and He's reliable, and there's truth in Him. So I can put my trust in God. And then the next one is actually a person. It's King Solomon. And King Solomon was the king of Israel who built the first temple in Jerusalem. And you all know King Solomon because we've studied him many times. So I have my next picture is a picture of a Nintendo DS. I'm hoping that this is the modern version because I googled Nintendo DS and do you know that there's like seemingly 500 of these things? But Nevertheless, I know that many of you have these devices, and I think that you would consider them to be a treasure. Well, we've talked about treasures over the last couple of weeks, haven't we? And right now in our Sunday school, we're learning Sermon on the Mount. And so we have a really good scripture message today that's very exciting, but it has to do with treasures and where we place them. So I have in my box some really cool things. The very first thing that I think about are when we think of treasures, we think of things that are expensive. And this is probably, along with my phone, some of the most expensive things that I have in my possession. Of course, I have a home and I have a car and those things are really expensive. Um, but I consider those nice things, but I don't consider them necessarily treasures. Um, but nevertheless, if it came to cost, these are probably some of the most expensive things that I have. Um, but here is the most expensive thing that I probably have. And it's both meaningful, but also expensive. And it is my wedding band, and my diamond um, engagement ring along with my 10-year anniversary band. And these were very, um, I can't say very expensive, but they were expensive. And the sentimental value obviously is because Mr. Richard gave them to me. But in my box, there are things also that have no value uh, that you could, I could never sell these things, and well, one thing I could, and you'll see what it is, but I could never sell these things and get a great amount of money for them, but they mean very, 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 they mean a lot to me. And here's one of them. This is just a little toy that my dad gave me when I was seven years old. And I don't know why, but this toy meant a lot to me and I have kept it forever. And so I'm gonna be 52 in June, and so I've had it for a very long time. But it was a toy that my dad gave me at Halloween, and it meant so much because my dad gave it to me. 
And here is one of my prize, prize, prize possessions. And I know that some of you, I know one person can appreciate it in this class and that would be Caden. But I'm sure all of you probably have one of these. This is Mr. Pooh Bear. And Mr. Pooh Bear is 47 years old. He has been in my life for 47 years. His ears tore, his lips are gone, his nose is gone, his eyebrows are gone. He has been washed but still looks dirty. But Mr. Pooh Bear was my very first stuffed animal that I can remember. And I got him right after I had surgery on my eye when I was five years old. So he means a great deal to me. And I love Mr. Pooh Bear. I love Winnie the Pooh, by the way, if you didn't know that. Now, I probably could get money for this one, but this one is only a treasure because of the times that we are living, okay? This would really mean nothing if it weren't for the time in which we live. And right here it is, a roll of toilet paper. This is quite a treasure right now. So I'm going to put all of these things back into my treasure box. And then I'm going to read the scripture to you that we're talking about. So remember, we're at the Mount. Um, we're at the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus has taken people and he's talking to them and they are followers of Christ. And so these lessons that he teaches on the Sermon on the Mount are lessons that are principles that we can live by. So I'm going to read. It's in, found in Matthew 6, 19 through 34. And if you have your sheet, you can read along with me. It says, Jesus saw crowds following him. He went up on the side of the mountain and sat down and began teaching them. Do not gather up wealth here on earth where moth can eat your lovely clothes. Rust can destroy your precious metals, and thieves can break in and steal all you have gathered. Instead, set your treasures in heaven, for where your treasure is, your heart will be. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and money at the same time. And I'm going to stop there, because I want to talk a little bit about this, okay? So... This is something that you guys probably really enjoy, a DS. And you know what? You would probably even consider it a treasure. But it's when and if you were to put that treasure above God that it becomes a problem. Okay? Because all of these things, like for instance, when I go on to be with Jesus in heaven, my son is going to take that little toy that my dad gave me and he's going to probably put it in a garbage bag because it won't mean anything to him. It will be an old toy that deserves to be in the garbage. Winnie the Pooh, I mean, same thing. You know, he's going to look at it and he's going to think it's just an old stuffed animal because it's not a treasure um, because it's material things, right? And they are old. And I would probably do the same if they didn't have meaning. But that's, you know, everything goes, everything kind of dies, so to speak. And so that's why we don't put our treasures here on earth where the things can be destroyed, right? As much as I love my car and I have a very nice car, that car will someday turn to rust and be in a junkyard. So that's what Jesus was saying. If you put those things and you put all of your emphasis on, on material things, on the things that we have, and that's where you find treasure, well, that's where your heart's going to be. But if you start focusing on other treasures, like for me, God is my number one treasure, my husband and my family, and see those things will be with me in heaven. So that's what Jesus is saying. Then he goes on and he says, Do not worry about what you will eat, drink, or wear. The Lord knows you, knows you, knows your needs, all of these things. He knows you need them all. Look at the birds. Do they not store up food? But your heavenly Father takes care of them. And you are far more important than birds. 
Look at the flowers. They do not work hard to have clothes. And even King Solomon, with all of his wealth, did not have clothes as beautiful as the flowers. Flowers are here today, and they wilt and they're gone tomorrow. God cares for you more than flowers. So don't worry by saying things like, what will I eat? Or what will I drink? What will I wear? Do not be like the unbeliever who run after all of those things. Your heavenly Father knows you need them. So seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Because we go back to our key words, we have worry and we have trust, right? So we're not to worry. I took some pictures here. And this picture is of food. Pizza. How many of us love that? And nothing like a really good burger. And then I put some fresh fruit because I like those. But you may have all kind of different types of food that you like. And, you know, sometimes you think, um, you know, maybe I won't have enough food. Maybe something will happen. But you know what? Really think about it. Have you ever really gone hungry? I don't think so. Most of us have been blessed and we've been blessed by God and he will take care of us. Here's another picture. It's flowers and birds and they are so beautiful and he does take care of them, doesn't he? But do you know what? You, you as a human being were made in his image and he cares about you more than anything else. So if he takes care of these things that he created, we know and we can be guaranteed that he will take care of us. And that makes me very excited. All right, I'm gonna have us to pray. And after we pray, I will see you on Wednesday. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for our lesson today. I thank you, Lord, that we can put our trust in you and we don't have to worry about our daily needs. Lord, you do take care of us and we thank you. Help us, Father, to keep our number one focus on you. Allow the treasures that we have on this earth to be things that don't um, go away by uh, means of being destroyed by our earth, but, Lord, the things that we can take to heaven with us. And we thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. All right. I love you guys. I'm praying for you, and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Bye-bye. And it's not turning off. Let's see. Sorry, guys.